Hey guys, welcome back and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be going over six things that I want done fixed to my VD Cali. In today's video, I'll be going over six things I need done to my VD Cali, touches up, fixes, any of that stuff. So yeah, hope you enjoy. Before I start this video, I want to apologize about the wind. Um, about 30 minutes ago, as I was washing the car, it was bright, sunny, and not a cloud in the sky. And as you can see, the weather's decided to change up. So yeah, when I did a review on my car back in March and all, I was talking about the condition of the paint and all. As you look at the car right now, the paint is in immaculate condition and it stands out pretty well. If you look around, there's not really any scratches on the side, except for a couple of scuffs and all. And wherever you take photos or stand, it's always bright, whether it's daytime, nighttime, whatever. But my biggest concerns are the front paint chips. I don't know if you can see, but there's this little paint chips here and they look like paintball marks. They're not paintball marks, but they look like someone's got a gun or some pebbles and just thrown it at them. They're like little spray marks and they bother me the most. Um, they're not really see that seeable unless you like really pay attention to them. But on the front bumper, the side skirts of the front bumper, if that's what you call them. And as you can't see, the door. Um, yeah. This is probably not really that concerning to me, but I guess if I was to spend the money, I would try and fix the door because they do look like bullet marks. And if you go closely up to them, they're kind of like in the paint. So yeah, if I was to get this re-sprayed, I would probably get it re-sprayed around the summertime. I'm not really focused on re-spraying the front bumper. It's not one of my biggest things right now. I kind of want to save up for other stuff like a dirt bike and I guess if I was to start all this massive project on redoing my car, it'd be next year. There's other chips on the back of the bumper, like right here and all, and the bonnet, which has a bit of paint chips. But other than that, that doesn't really bother me because the car's gonna get paint chips, I know, in the future with me going country driving and rural areas, so yeah. Another thing that's really on my mind about replacing is the infotainment screen. Now, as you look around it, you can see the scratches down the bottom and all and although they don't really affect you in places when it's shady or at night time you do really get affected in the daytime one thing i do like about this head unit is it's really simple basic and it's stock as you can see the screen is pretty scratched at the bottom from the previous owner i guess he kind of follows a touch screen or when you change the radio stations you kind of probably scratch it and one thing which is impossible to see is in the daytime because the screen is just lit up with scratches and you can barely see what's going on the screen. At night time, it is pretty easy to see because it's dark and the scratches aren't sharp and even in places like this when there's shade and all. But yeah, the, the screen, it, just, it needs to be replaced. I found out ways where you can literally just open this up and pull the screen out, which is a nice simple thing. And um, if you want to get a replacement screen, you don't need to take out the whole system. I think you just need to take this screen out, which is just like a face cover. I'm not 100% sure on that, that's why I'm trying to research about that. I've been going to my local Holden dealership, but they don't really have a clue. They do, but I have to wait till Monday, which is tomorrow, to go to the Holden certified service because the current dealership it is, doesn't have a clue on Holden. You're probably asking, oh, why I'm um, replacing the screen where you can get like a K-Han unit or an off-brand aftermarket thing. Well, the thing is that one thing is, a, I don't have the money for a K-Han unit as they are 800 bucks or more. And number two, I'm very big on how the car looks stock. I like what it, when it comes out of the dealership fresh. I don't like when people mod their cars. I'm all about nostalgia, stock, simple. And my goal is to keep this car for a long time and I do like it when I hop into other people's cars like Commodores and Callies and they have the stock screen, it's all nice. So I want mine to be the exact same, but it's not gonna fly by with this crash on the screen. So yeah, that's one of my, um, my second things I wanna do. Number three, the wheel. As you can see, these bits here are coming off and it's a very big common thing for the V Commodore. It's not just mine that does it, it's majority of VEs that do it. My dad's is doing it and I've seen many other people that has theirs doing it as well, which is just, the glue just likes to come off and as it doesn't bother me now I know I will in the future because at some point these things will come off and then more will rip off So my goal is to get the steering wheel replaced It's not on my mind now, but I know down the track in like a couple of years when these things are about to peel off that I will want it because 
I like the steel more and I don't want to be playing where I'm these and flick this off and then be disappointed. I don't know how hard it is to get a Calais wheel. I've seen them on eBay for about 80 to 100 bucks, but again, installing them is a bit difficult because you need to put the airbag back in, um, recalibrate the wheel with the trip computer. So there's a few things that will need to be done. And that's one thing that's holding me back because I know that with the wheel and the screen as well, that I don't know, I don't know about the screen, but I know about the wheel. But with the screen, you probably have to recalibrate it with the computer, the trip, not the computer, the trip computer, the computer in the car. So if you want to press aux or ASM or help or whatever button, it will recognize. Another thing for me that I really want to get replaced is the speaker system in this car. Although the speaker system in this car is incredible, there's one thing that's wrong with it. They're crackling, therefore they've shit themselves. This speaker and this speaker have both shut themselves and when playing songs we have really good treble that crackle. It's really annoying because it just ruins the audio of the music. When you're sitting in the back of the car behind the driver's side, this speaker here is very quiet as well. I think it's kind of going down, but literally you'll be sitting and all you hear is music coming louder from here and louder from over here, but it'll be really quiet here. And as much as I don't carry passengers now, when I do go to my Grand Prix, I know that I will be carrying people and I don't want them to have a bad experience in the back because the speakers are broken. And also, I want good quality speakers when driving as well. If I was to replace the speakers, I would be getting these back speakers here because there is an indent. And if you did opt for the Cali V SSV, you would get a back speaker behind the seat. So if I was to replace the speakers, I would get a speaker behind the seats because they both go there and there. If I was to replace the speakers, I don't know if I'd go with a stock speaker like the Calais or even upgrade to the Caprice by going to a Wreckers and just grabbing one of a old Caprice that's been in an accident. Or I don't know if I'd go with something like Alpine or other speaker brands like Bose and all. I need to do a bit of research first before I buy the speakers. But yeah, my, my biggest option would be going back to stock if the other brands are too expensive because I have been to places like Autobahn and Super Chip Auto and I've tried their speakers and for 200 bucks you're getting a basic speaker that you probably get in a Ford Mondeo which is cheap and garbage and I'd rather go towards something like a Caprice and grab something out and chuck them in here because I know that the door cards would be the exact same for the Caprice and the Calais. I never really did a video on this but as you can see there is pins in my roof liner and they always are at the back as well and that is because my roof liner is coming down but it's coming down so my goal is to get this roof liner replaced the roof liner isn't really the best it's kind of coming down a lot um i've had to use quite a few pins actually to keep it stuck up so far those pins are doing the job but i know in the summertime that these will come down and i know that it will just go blop and it will annoy me the most the roof isn't cheap to repair as well. It is about an $800 job, especially with it being a sedan. And it's not a wagon nor a dude, so it's actually pretty difficult to get out of the car. So yeah, it's about an $800 job, which I'll probably do around the summertime because I know that it will get hot and this thing will just drop even more and the glue will just unstick. So yeah, um, yeah. my goal is to get this thing done in the summertime. I know this is not really a repair and all, but I guess it's kind of a must. I do really need a tow bar for this car and I was going to install it mid-year but I had other things up and I was spending a bit too much money on events like whatever came on like the Grand Prix and the Sand Dance kind of put me down as well because I was supposed to buy it um, around like two weeks ago. So I will end up trying to, I will try and find a tow bar for me because I do need it when I want to turn the dirt bike to my green peas. But yeah, so far she's going to have nothing on the back but yeah, my goal is to get a tow bar for the car so I can tow anything I want. I know this has been a short video, but I do hope that you 